I've got a place I need to go. Get out of the car right now. Can't you walk to the shelter? My husband said this in the car on the way to the evacuation shelter right after the hurricane hit. It goes without saying that it's impossible to walk in the midst of such a storm. What are you talking about? Hurry up and start the car and take me to the shelter. While making such an appeal, I was silently dragged out of the car by my husband. My futile resistance left me stranded outside the car in the pouring rain. My husband, after giving me a quick glance, got into the car and accelerated away. The wind blew so hard I couldn't stand and the heavy downpour pounded my body. That's when my anger reached its peak. I don't need a husband who would leave his wife behind on a hurricane day. I'll make sure that man regrets it. With clenched fists, I slowly walked through the storm towards the shelter. My name is Evelyn Anderson. I'm a working wife in my third year of marriage. I met my husband Larry at the after party of a friend's wedding. I was invited as a friend of the priest and Larry was invited as a friend of the groom. I worked as a tax accountant and was busy at the office. I thought I didn't need a boyfriend for a while, but with Larry's persistent pursuit, we started dating. Amidst the busy days, our relationship progressed smoothly and he proposed in the second year. Evelyn, I'm sure I will make you happy, so please, marry me. I was swayed by Larry's passionate words and accepted the proposal. He was looking at his father-in-law's travel company as the heir apparent. In his 30s, he was already in the position of a department head and had a sufficient income. My parents-in-law were very kind people and said this to me when we first met. I'm so happy that Larry's fiancé is such a wonderful person. Please, take good care of him from now on. I'm thinking of entrusting our family's company to Larry in the future. Evelyn, please support our son. A serious and gentle father-in-law with a calm mother-in-law. I had a good impression of them. Later, Larry and I registered our marriage. After our wedding, we started living together in an apartment near his company. With a move, I resigned from the tax accounting firm where I had been working. Afterward, I had decided to work as a freelance tax accountant. When we began living together, Larry's father said to him, Larry, since you both are a working couple, make sure to cooperate with household chores. And my mother-in-law followed suit. That's right. Depending entirely on Evelyn isn't good. You should rely on each other. He said, I understand. And I was smiling next to him. With wonderful in-laws like Larry's, I believed that a happy married life awaited us. Up until that moment, I had unquestioningly believed it. However, after living with Larry, I realized something. He had absolutely no domestic skills. He didn't know how to cook, and he didn't even know how to operate the washing machine. He had lived with his parents for so long, so it might be understandable to some extent. Thinking that, I tried to teach Larry about household chores, but he responded with a reluctance. I'm just not motivated to do housework. Huh? Once you're married, isn't housework the wife's job? Don't even think about making me do it. But your father and mother said to cooperate, didn't they? Thus just giving the right answers in front of our parents. But I don't do housework. Don't even think about tattling to your parents. They'll think you're an incapable wife. After that, Larry began to unapologetically push all the household chores onto me. I appreciate that my father-in-law asked me to do the taxes for his company when we got married, but I am a freelance tax accountant and have to look for other work. Even though I was quite busy, Larry always came home on time, lounged around, and never offered to help. However, since we were already married, I was a wife. That's what being a wife meant. I told myself that and managed all the household chores on my own. Around a year into this married life, I found out I was pregnant. While Larry seemed pleased, he casually said something like this. Even during pregnancy, don't slack off on household chores as you have been. Huh? Larry, won't you help out? 
When the child is born, childcare will also be your responsibility, Evelyn. You need to get used to busy days from now. With those words, Larry still refused to help at all. I was starting to give up. Soon after that, I was told at the obstetrician's office that the baby's heartbeat cannot be detected. The result was an early miscarriage. The doctor encouraged me, saying, It happens all the time. But I had assumed that things would go smoothly until the birth, and I was devastated. When I reported this in tears to Larry, he had this to say. I was actually getting a bit excited that we'd have a child. The cause must be with you, right? Well, the doctor said there wasn't any specific cause, and it's just something that happens. Excuses won't cut it. Make sure it works next time. Saying that, Larry quickly went to take a bath. I stood there in astonishment, watching his back. We had already informed our parents about the pregnancy, so when I told them about the unfortunate result, my mother-in-law immediately came to me. You don't have to worry. More importantly, you need to take care of yourself now, Evelyn. Mom, thank you. Dad was worried too. Take your time to recover, and please come to our place when you're feeling better. Yes. The first kind words spoken to me after the miscarriage brought me to tears. My mother-in-law kept patting my back. I was grateful for having such kind in-laws. Afterward, I never forgot their kindness and served my in-laws well. I completed the tasks my father-in-law requested flawlessly, gave them gifts on special occasions, and often had tea with my mother-in-law. My in-laws treated me like their own daughter and we had built a good relationship. On the other hand, my relationship with Larry wasn't going well. Since the miscarriage, Larry's attitude towards me had become even colder. He would ignore me when I tried to talk to him or would sigh in annoyance. Additionally, he frequently mentioned that his work had become busier, which meant he was absent from home more often. I felt lonely about this situation. And one day, Larry had left his phone in the living room while he was in the bath. And a message had arrived on it. Thank you for meeting with me today, and I'll see you tomorrow. The sender's name was Jasmine Tanny, a name I didn't recognize. I tried to check the contents of the phone while trying to control my pounding heart, but it was locked, and I couldn't open it. Afterward, I asked a secretary at Larry's company with whom we were friendly, and found out that Jasmine Tanny was a new employee in Larry's department. When I saw her photo, Jasmine was a young and petite woman. He was cheating on me behind my back? And with a colleague? However, I couldn't confront him without solid evidence. I decided to use my savings and hired a private investigator to look into Larry's actions. At that time, the weather forecast warned of an approaching hurricane. Moreover, it was reported to be a powerful and large hurricane, likely to make landfall. I had been stocking up on disaster preparedness supplies for a few days, and finally the typhoon made landfall. Larry also had a day off from work, so we were at home from the morning. The wind kept getting stronger and the rain became intense. We were feeling anxious, but then the mobile phone emitted a warning sound. I checked it and it was an emergency message. The content urged us to evacuate immediately due to the risk of flooding near our house. Larry, there might be a flood here too. We need to evacuate quickly. Upon telling my husband this in a rush, he responded seriously. You're right, and began preparations. The two of us carried our belongings and got into the car, heading to a shelter about 30 minutes away. About 10 minutes after driving, a text message reached Larry's phone. Upon checking it, he quickly changed his expression. I have to go to a place I can't miss. Huh? Get out right now. You can walk to the shelter, can't you? Outside, there was, of course, a violent storm. Walking in such conditions was almost impossible. What are you saying? Get the car out and take me to the shelter. I complained, but Larry silently started to pull me out of the car. Resistance was in vain, and he threw me out into the pouring rain. 
After glancing at me, my husband got back into the car and drove away hastily. The wind was so strong that I couldn't stand, and the heavy rain battered my body. I had a rough idea of his destination. He must have gone to his affair partner. At that moment, my anger reached its peak. A husband who abandons his wife on a hurricane day to visit his affair partner is no longer needed. I will definitely show that man a thing or two. I clenched my fist tightly and began walking slowly toward the shelter, filled with determination. Forty minutes later, I finally arrived at the shelter. The people at the shelter, seeing me in tatters, said things like, Did you walk here? Where's your family? And handed me towels and blankets. I accepted them and expressed my gratitude. Then, my mobile phone received a message. After checking the content, I quickly made a call to a certain place. While taking a breather at the shelter, my mobile phone rang. The caller was Larry. I answered the call in silence. Hey, Evelyn, help me. I could hear Larry's panicked voice on the other end of the phone. The road is flooded and my car is stuck. I'm stranded. Come and help me. I'm on 3rd Avenue. When I remained silent, my husband's tone became frantic. What? Are you still mad about what happened earlier? This is no time for that. My life is in danger here. Who are you with? Huh? Um, well, a colleague from work needed help, so I gave her a ride in the car. Oh, I see. Well, I hope you both can overcome this crisis together. I hung up the phone without waiting for a response. However, the relentless calls continued. Feeling annoyed, I powered off my phone and ignored the incoming calls. But then, a familiar voice spoke to me. Evelyn, you're safe. It was Larry's mother, my mother-in-law. She had rushed to the shelter from the safety of her home after I called. Mom, Dad. Evelyn, you look terrible. What on earth happened? Where is Larry? There's something important I need to tell you both. I told my in-laws everything. The way Larry was treating me at home, how he forcibly dropped me off on our way to the shelter, and about Larry's affair. An hour later, a battered Larry and Jasmine showed up at the shelter. When Larry saw me, he immediately started blaming me. Hey, I called you multiple times and you hung up on me. Thanks to that, it was really tough. Oh, really? How so? I had no choice but to abandon the car before it got engulfed by the water. In the end, I had to walk for 30 minutes to get here. If you had come to help me, I might not have gone through this ordeal. Next to the agitated Larry, Jasmine was drying her hair with a towel, her face stern. I calmly asked her, The place you abandoned me to reach, is it her place? Larry reacted with a shocked expression. No, it's different. I got a sudden work-related matter that required me to go to the office. I happened to see her on the way and offered her a ride. Larry, is that the truth? At that moment, with arms folded, my father-in-law appeared. Beside him was my expressionless mother-in-law. Huh? What are you doing here with my parents? Just answer the question. Are you telling the truth? My father-in-law asked in a low voice, and Larry's eyes started to wander. Of course, it's the truth. What are you getting at? Then what is this? I thrust my phone screen in front of Larry. The evidence of his affair that I had obtained through a detective agency was clearly displayed. Photos of him kissing Jasmine and entering questionable places? There was no way to deny any of it. Wh what is this? I explained it to the stunned Larry. I had suspected my husband's strange behavior for a while, so I had requested an investigation. Right after being abandoned by Larry and making it to the evacuation center on my own, these photos were sent to me by the detective agency. Huh? So my dad and mom? Larry looked back and forth between me and my in-laws in a daze. My mother-in-law spoke to him in a cold voice. I've already seen the evidence from Evelyn. You have a lot of nerve to cheat on your wife with an employee. My in-laws glared at Larry. At that, Larry suddenly became flustered. No, this is a misunderstanding. 
I didn't intend to hurt Evelyn. It was just a fling. Upon hearing this, Jasmine became furious. What? Larry, what are you saying? You told me you love only me and want to remarry. Hey, shut up. You said there was no love for your wife anymore. Was that a lie? Jasmine, screaming loudly, was silenced by a cough from my father-in-law. Larry, I'm disappointed in you. Not only did you betray Evelyn, who supported you, but you also threw her out on such a stormy day exposing her to danger. That's not something a human should do. D dad I must have spoiled you too much. I'm firing you and cutting off the parent-child relationship. Jasmine, I plan to discharge you from caregiving too. What? Larry and Jasmine suddenly started panicking. Larry clung to his mother, only to be coldly pushed away. Now my husband approached me. Evelyn, please, forgive me. You're the only one for me. Ask my dad and mom to reconsider, please. I shoved Larry with all my might, and as he fell I seized the opportunity to lay down a few cutting words. Enough! I'll never forgive you. A man who abandons his wife on a stormy day? I'll pass. We can get a divorce, and you can pay us both alimony. The rest is up to you and your newfound love. Do whatever you want. W well we're still a married couple, aren't we? As Larry bows his head, Jasmine jumped in. Hey, what about the future position of the company president's wife? It's troublesome to lose both the position and the car. This wasn't the deal. Ugh, shut up. It's mostly because of you. Huh? Are you saying it's my fault? Before long, they started an ugly argument. It turns out their relationship was fragile enough to crumble like this. I observed them with a detached gaze. Eventually, my in-laws sighed and took me away, leaving them behind. Later, Larry and I divorced. Larry quickly paid the $30,000 in alimony, and my in-laws also transferred a substantial sum as compensation for the trouble. True to their declaration, my in-laws cut off all ties with Larry. On top of that, my father-in-law fired both Larry and Jasmine. Jasmine became unemployed and I demanded alimony as I had declared. Jasmine's parents ended up repaying it, as Jasmine had no savings. When her parents learned of their daughter's behavior, they were furious and took Jasmine back to the countryside. Thus, Larry and Jasmine had a complete breakup. Larry, paying alimony, having no savings, and being unemployed, reportedly ended up in a rundown apartment, desperately searching for employment. Regardless, it's no longer my concern. On the other hand, armed with the compensation, I moved and started living on my own. I continued my work as a tax accountant, with my father-in-law still providing me with job opportunities. Occasionally, I have tea with my mother-in-law. From now on, I want to focus on my own career, work hard, and find truly trustworthy people.